Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week 8 of our AE501 journey. So let's take a look at the roadmap and see what we're doing. So what we are up to this week is a continuing exploration of uh, partial differential equations. So as you can see, we are now just going to continue our discussion and look at uh, a few different other PDEs. So first video for this week is looking at what's known as Laplace's equation. And then what I'd like to do is actually extend some of the discussion that we had during week seven. So remember back here in week seven, we started with the one dimensional wave equation up here. Well, now I'd like to extend this now to two dimensions. So how do we have now, instead of a vibrating, for example, like a vibrating string, what if you had like a vibrating membrane? So that's what these two are looking at is basically how to derive or extend the idea of a 1D wave equation to a 2D wave equation, and then how to go ahead and solve that 2D wave equation. Um, and then that's going to be pretty much the end of our discussion of analytical methods of how to analyze and solve certain classes of PDEs. After that, now that we have a good foundation of what a PDE is analytically and how to solve it, I like to look at some numerical techniques of how you might be able to solve more general, more complicated PDEs. So again, this follows our ordinary differential equation uh, discussion in a very similar fashion, right? So remember, all the way back in week two and three, we looked at ordinary differential equations, and again, we looked at how to analytically solve them first, and then we looked at how to use numerical tools like um, Simulink or other uh, packages to numerically solve ODEs. Well, that's the exact same thing we're going to do here, but we're going to see that PDEs, as you might expect, are a little bit more complicated and lead a, need a little bit of different techniques to um, approach them. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how to solve them numerically um, in a couple of different scenarios. So that's where we're going. Again, like I said, week eight is pretty simple. We're just continuing our PDE discussion. Um, so why don't we jump over to the homework and actually before we jump over to the homework what I will maybe mention is remember here back in week 7 we did end week 7 talking about the heat equation and if you remember homework 7 didn't have any uh, real exercises focusing on that well that's what I kind of wanted to fix in week 8 or homework number 8 so homework 8 the first problem is a heat equation problem which is actually a leftover kind of artifact from week 7 so again if you don't remember what this heat equation stuff is or how to derive it or any of these things that we were talking about go back and watch the uh, ending videos of week 7 so again this problem is pretty straightforward it's just saying you've got a bar this is a one-dimensional bar um, it's long and it's thin but each of the ends are constrained to be at zero degrees and I'm going to give you some physical constants of the bar and I'm going to give you here's an initial condition of the heat distribution over the bar as a function of X so some parts of the bar are hotter than others etc etc and all I want to see is what happens when you give it this initial condition and just let the system evolve right where does the heat go um, it's probably going to go as you can probably imagine it's going to go out the ends towards zero so you're going to hopefully see the bar is going to start hot but it's going to smooth out um, and again, we just want to be able to animate what does that temperature distribution look like as a function of both space and time, right? That's what we're looking for. Okay, um, and again, what I'm asking you to do here is uh, last week we used MATLAB to do a lot of the animations. Well, this week I'd like to try to see if we can get Mathematica to do similar operations. So there's a function called manipulate, and uh, I showed how to use that in several of the videos. And what we'd like to look at is make this animation here in Mathematica. Now, in terms of turning it in for this problem, you don't need to turn in a movie. Just take a, a, a screenshot of the animation, you know, at a certain frame, um, maybe at somewhere in the middle, uh, you know, at t equals, I don't know, 50 or, you know, find out whatever reasonable number it is. Just take one or two screenshots of what it looks like at different times and you can include that in your report and turn that in. So that should be pretty simple. Okay, so that's problem one. Problem two is another heat problem, but now it's a two-dimensional heat problem. So now instead of a long, thin bar, you've got a thin kind of uh, two-dimensional plate, right? So this plate, uh, again, has physical dimensions. Now, what we're going to do in, is constrain the left, bottom, and the right side of the plate to be zero degrees. So these things are butted up against the big blocks of ice or something like that. And the top here is we are going to introduce a temperature distribution like this. So again, this is what the temperature looks like and varies with X only along the top of the bar. So really, this is the um, 
solution, uh, the solution of your heat equation when y is equal to b, it should equal this distribution, okay? And, and you're going to need that information in just a second, okay? So um, what we're asking for is, again, in our video uh, talking about the Laplace equation this week, we're going to show how you can get the steady state solution of this. So what I mean by that is when t goes to infinity, what happens? So this is sort of, it's again, it's a two-dimensional PDE, right? In the, in the previous one where we had a bar, this is also a two-dimensional PDE in the sense that the two independent variables are a spatial variable and a temporal variable, right? Now, in this case, uh, we're also now considering a two-dimensional PDE, except both of these independent variables are space. So you have a, sp a spatial X and a spatial Y. So that's what we mean by this steady state adjective is that we don't want to animate this and see how does the solution vary over time. I want to know what does the solution eventually settle out to when t goes to infinity, okay? So we're looking at basically trying to find out, okay, if you have a temperature distribution along the top edge that looks like this, heat is going to flow all over the place, but eventually it's going to reach some steady state distribution over X and Y of this entire plate. That's what we're getting with this, um, basically this, this solution here. Okay. Now, um, the solution is going to involve, as you saw in all the other PDs, we're going to have to calculate some of these coefficients, right? So what we would like to do is in the Laplace equation video, we show that you can get these coefficients like this okay now what we need to do is you might stare at this and say okay this is just an integral right in fact I already have F I know what all these things are I can basically go ahead and try to perform this integral so um, I'm gonna encourage you to do that but I think what you're gonna end up with is when you try to do this um, well I'll tell you what I'm not gonna spoil the whole thing what try to do this and don't be surprised if it doesn't work directly okay let's put it that way okay so instead, I think you're going to try to directly compute this. You might run into an obstacle or two. So that's what this hint here is, is how to proceed. So what I'm suggesting is that the solution is this. And you can see it goes from n equals 1 to infinity. Well, write out a few of these terms, maybe up to n equals 4. So you're not going to write out an infinite series, but at least write out four terms. And if you look at what that looks like, Hopefully, it's going to, uh, if you examine the equation, you might be able to use some um, logical argument to kind of determine what these coefficients have to be. So again, um, I'll leave it at that and let, let people explore. This might be one of these, if you just try it a little bit, that might be interesting. And hopefully, you'll gain some insight and there will be an aha moment. Um, but if not, let's come to office hours or email me and let me know. We can talk about it, okay? All right, so that's the hard part. Once you've got part A done, it's pretty much just you, you, you've got you've got this whole expression. Well, just go ahead and compute what this looks like, right? And verify that it does satisfy um, the boundary conditions uh, and the original PDE, namely the uh, Laplace equation, right? And then we can go ahead and plot the scenario in Mathematica. And again, notice we said plot, not animate, right? Because animate implies that we're looking at how it varies as a function of time. And as we discussed here, there is no time component in this because we're looking at the steady state solution. So really, this is just a two-dimensional um, uh, function, right? The domain or the independent variable, there's two independent variables. So if you plot this thing, literally, I'm just saying, do plot 3D in Mathematica on this thing, you're going to come up with a, you know, effectively a 3D plot, right? Which is going to show the temperature distribution at steady state over this plate. Okay, so that's problem two. Um, all right, problem three is now, uh, it's a two-dimensional wave equation. So again, this is very similar to homework seven, right? Remember homework seven, we looked at the 1D wave equation. We animated, we solved it, we animated it, we watched how this 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 string vibrated in one dimension now in this problem we're just looking at okay we don't have a string you've got like a rectangular membrane so this is like you can think of it as the uh, the head of a drum or something like that that would vibrate but it vibrates in two dimensions so again this is almost the same as the previous uh, homework seven it's just solve the thing right get some partial sums of what this thing looks like and then animate it but in this case again I'd like people to animate this in Mathematica 
And um, again, we have videos on how to do that. So just to refresh your memory, remember back in week seven, we had uh, both of these discussions of how to create movies and animation in both MATLAB and Mathematica. So for this part of the problem, just go ahead and do this in Mathematica. Follow that workflow and use Math Mathematica to create a movie, uh, compress it, and just like we did last week, submit it to the website as a separate uh, file. Okay, um, yeah. And then the last problem is kind of fun and uh, doesn't involve a lot, but like we said, the strength of a lot of these approaches is that we first understand the analytical way to approach and solve some of these classes of problems, right? But in reality, um, a lot of times these uh, analytical techniques only work for a small family of these um, types of systems. Really, the power comes from now that we understand how to analytically solve them, can we develop some numerical techniques to solve more general types and uh, a wider class of problems? So what I'd like to do here is in this video, I outline how to do that. All I'm asking for in problem four is basically go ahead and you're going to see that in the video I develop a uh, very simple MATLAB script to, to, to solve an example PDE numerically. All I want you to do is just basically play around with that script and just see what it does. So again, let me just show you uh, so we're all on the same page. Here's the, here's the video and as you can kind of see here, um, yeah, I make this script over here, and in fact, you can pretty much just copy, uh, type in what I do here. It's not a long script. You can see it's kind of less than 100 lines. Um, and make yourself a script, which it's going to make these animations. It's going to solve this. You can now explore what happens as you change and vary different types of parameters, what goes on. So that's all I'm asking for in this problem number four is basically just play with the script and then r summarize your findings right um tell me what's interesting about this uh, numerical technique okay so with that being said i think that covers everything we're talking about this week uh let me know if you have any questions otherwise um i'll look forward to seeing everyone in office hours all right thanks everybody bye